honor. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, our teacher, our leader. In Jesus' name, I pray. Come on and give God a praise offering, everybody. Amen. You may be seated. I know since a lot of people are missing uh, because of the storm, why don't we just give out the cake today and do the birthdays next Sunday? How about that? How about that? Amen. <laughs> so we can be fair. Amen. It's nobody's fault. They can't get uh, nobody to come shovel them out. I promise you, it's, it's something. I'm sitting in the window looking out and waiting. Where is he? God, what time is it? <laughs> I called Apostle Turner. What am I going to do? Amen. And um, I know some people are watching online. Please, uh, we're taking a covenant off our covenant offering. And if you have an offering, we uh, would like to make sure that we uh, meet our obligation to take care of our apostles. So I'm asking you if you would go online at uh, what? At on uh, paper, libertytemple.org, and uh, put in. Uh, your offering, your tithe, your uh, covenant, and the offering for <laughs> Apostle Turner and his family, we would appreciate it. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for your cooperation as well, and blessings to you. We're in Genesis, the 11th chapter. We had a wonderful January conference. And God was so faithful. He was faithful over the weather. I, amen. The storms held up until this month. Amen. So we, we're so faithful, so grateful to God because he allowed our guests to get in and to get out. And it's just been wonderful. And uh, now we're going to prepare for Founders uh, Weekend that's coming up in uh, March. Amen. So tickets shall go on sale shortly, like very shortly. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning with this thought, the cost of the pursuit of God's promise. When I was looking at Genesis, the 11th chapter, reading from the 27th through the 32nd verse, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father. Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishka. But Sarai was barren, and she had no child. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his Abram's his son Abram's wife and they went forth from them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan and they came into Haran and dealt, dwelt there amen let's jump to next chapter verse 12 verse 1 now the Lord had said now, you know, Abram married his dad's daughter. Amen. But God began to speak to him. And he said in verse 1, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. And I will make thee, say that's a promise. 
I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Say, that's a promise. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken, and Lot went with him. And say, and Lot went with him. Amen. Now, Abraham, in obeying God, he didn't leave by himself. He took Lot with him. Uh, it, uh, come on. And But God's promise was not if you take Lot too. It was if you leave. You leave, and this is the promise I have for your obedience. Amen. And so because he took Lot, he had a lot of problems. <laughs> Amen. And a lot of times things happen to, happen to us because why? Uh, a lot of times we don't want to leave uh, people alone. We don't want to leave things. We don't want to leave that house. We don't want to leave, uh, 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 get rid of that car. You know the car not no more good. Amen. It needs to be gone. Amen. But you're going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. It's a relic. Amen. And many times we detain the promise just because of a little disobedience. We detain the promise because when God separates you, it's for a reason. Amen. Because God want to deal with you by yourself. Say by yourself. Amen. What, what, what happens when we don't want to leave? Many times we don't want to leave because it's our comfort zone. It's familiar to us. So we don't want to leave that place that's familiar. We don't want to leave the people that's familiar. Come on. And consequently, amen, what happens? We detain the promise. Amen. You can slow down your progress by who you allow in your circle. You can slow down what God wants to do for you because you got a gift of mercy. I, I, I wish I had me some help. Amen. I just feel so sorry for them. I, I just, you know, it's, I know they, did, they just can't help themselves. But sometimes, come on, if they're going to grow up and stand on their own feet, oh yeah, come on, somebody, the best thing to do is to leave them. That's, that's hard, but that's real. Why? I remember when my sister was on drugs really bad and, I had called um, one of those agencies because I wanted to take her so she can get some help. And um, they told me, oh, no, you can't bring her here. Because if she wants help, she got to walk in here by herself. I, 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 come on. Now, you know you don't want to do that because you love your your siblings, you 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 want to help them, amen. But a lot of times we're aiding and abetting habits that will kill them. But we're thinking we're doing right. I say, God, well, what's up with that? He said, You think you mean? You think you can resolve people's issues? better than I can oh y'all come on amen you you think you know if people lift you up 
come on, if people lift you up. Uh, uh, amen. But then when you examine yourself, he said, now, is it something wrong with you? Is it an esteem issue with you? I, I guess can't get me no help right here. Amen. I, I, are you a person that, you know, you, you need a crutch by becoming one? Huh? So we're our own future's worst enemy. Uh, this ain't trying to get me. Come on, somebody. You detaining where God wants to take you. You're limiting what God wants to reveal to you. Because he cannot reveal anything to you, amen, when you can't see him. So, he said, the first thing you got to do, when I make a promise to you, that's the promise to you. Now, the way you accept the promise will determine how people get blessed from the promise. So, because Lot, goes to another Sodom, Gomorrah, and then Abraham got to stand in the gap, and he got to make up the hedge. They, they're, they're the, uh, the, the families get into it. Didn't God know that was going to happen? That's why he told you you can't bring everybody with you. Didn't he know what was in Lot's heart? God, let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter. Y'all with me right here? Amen. I say, you know what? This is not the year for you to be stopped. <laughs> By being a crutch for others. <laughs> Amen. What does that do? It tires you out. It makes you grumpy. It makes you angry. Come on, now you want to give them and help them, and then you want to be mad at the same time. Who confused? The one that's accepting or the one that's giving? Somebody confused around here. Amen. And so instead of you embracing what God has for you, the success that God has for you, the good health that God has for you. You want to expend all your energy being him. So you can't get well when your mind is sick. Y'all with me, right? Amen. So God had a particular reason for telling him to come out. Let's look at it. Verse 11, chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. Now, this is something. God called you someplace that you don't even know nothing about, and you're taking someplace where you don't even know where you're going. You don't know what will be required of you when you get there. But we do know that the footsteps of a righteous man has been ordered, have been ordered by the Lord. Amen. Why, why would God call for separation? Say for your development. Number one, he's calling for you to have an ear for his voice without outside influence. Now, God did not consider Sarah 
an outside influence. But everything outside of covenant, he could consider it an interference. <laughs> Are y'all with me right here? This is good. Why? Because this is the same thing when the Holy Spirit is teaching us. When he's elevating our hearing, he's elevating our sensitivity. He can't do it when you in, uh, in involved in a lot of people and a lot of stuff. He, he can't do it because you will get the voices mixed up. Uh, why? Because everybody got an opinion. Uh, everybody want to tell you how to do it and everybody want to tell you what's wrong and what's I, I wish I had me some help right here. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Amen. That you are not influenced by the outside. Why? Because it isn't about people. It's about you and him. The promise was in the relationship and his obedience to the relationship because God chose him to separate him. Come on, why? Because now you got to be untaught, you gotta, it, right? Untaught, you, you got to take away everything your daddy taught you. Amen. A lot of times we got to be untaught about religion. Amen. So you have to get all that stuff that you thought was right. Come on. Amen. And God going to give you another way to see. Uh, that you can see into things. Amen. Without, allow, without allowing it to corrupt your heart and your mind. That's why you got to forgive. Amen. So what you thought about your parents will not interrupt your future. And a lot of people's future is interrupted by mindsets and outside influences. Why? Because he said, the scripture said, I'll let nothing. That's what Paul said. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Amen. So here, um, God really did not call him uh, in a separation from his family family. He called him for separation from a place. Say it was from a place. Amen. He had to separate himself from the norm, from the witchcraft, and from the false worship. Come on, somebody. Amen. Abram had to move. And, amen. He had to separate himself from what was familiar. That's why a lot of you may be born in Mississippi. You're in Chicago. You're born in New York. you somewhere. Amen. Because you didn't just... Move, you separated from a place. Oh, this is good. Why? Because it was not good. It was something in you. Even if you didn't have the Holy Ghost when you move, it was something in you that told you it wasn't nothing here for you. Praise God. Amen. Here, uh, what happened is, he takes his dad, his dad slows him down because he's getting older. Amen. Uh, uh, although Abram never separated from his father. Amen. Because your father going to be your father whether you live in whatever town. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. He still, if you moved to Canaan uh, and your dad stayed in Ur, he's still going to be your daddy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes it's not good to live with your family. 
is not healthy for you. Now, that's not the case for everyone, but that's the case for some people. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's why you have so many people getting delivered down here because of what they went through. What, what, what do people get delivered from? From what they went through in their what? What influenced them most of their lives. And then not only are they have to get delivered, but then God has to rebuild them. Amen. Then they have to believe that they have been rebuilt and not fall into the same trap. Come on, of needing deliverance over and over Why? Because they meet one person that's stronger than them, Lord. They meet somebody that reminds them of the past, and, and it sends them and sets them back. But when you heal, you welcome your past to come to you so it can see your strength. I ain't the same. Uh, come on, I'm not the same little something that you saw when I was... Come on, I'm not that I'm not that person. Amen. Why? Because you've had an opportunity to learn, you had an opportunity to grow, you had an opportunity to mature, you have an opportunity to look at things like we are and say, you know what? It wasn't their fault. It isn't their fault of what I make myself become. The only hindrances that happen to me are the ones I allow. Why? So I can give myself an excuse to feel sorry for myself. Again, the spirit of inferiority, spirits of insecurities. Amen. You cannot be insecure this year. Amen. You cannot be inferior. You are who God made you to be. Come on, somebody. You got strength. You got power of God living inside of you. I wish I had me some help. Instead of you getting delivered, you become the deliverer. Amen. So when they come down, you know how they feel because you were there. Oh, y'all won't help me. Amen. And you know what? God may give me strength so that I can tell hundreds you ain't got to go that route. Amen. So Abram had, and, and, and then check this out. Abram had a lot to deal with. When you got a lot to deal with, you don't need to be crowded. What did he have to do? He had to deal with the death of his brother. He had to deal with the barrenness of his wife. Then he had to deal with the death of his father. Amen. Could you, do you understand how low he could have sunk if he did know God? Could, could you imagine how Everyone in his groin who are to be blessed from him are held up by him. Wow. Amen. This is why God wants you to know you're, you're stronger than you were last year. Amen. Is anybody stronger than you were? Say, I'm stronger than I was last year. Amen. I don't want to see your face looking lonely, looking long, looking ugly. Come on, crying and snotting and feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, no, I'm in pursuit of what God has promised me. Is anybody with me right here? Amen. 
So we have to understand when we look and observe what Abraham went through, all I could think of that there were preparations for the receipt of the promise. And one of those preparations is a broken heart. Because through your brokenness, you can hear better. Do you know brokenness will keep you from distractions? Because we tend to separate ourselves when we're broken. We pray better when we're broken. We fast better when we're broken. We seek better when we're broken. Oh, yeah. Amen, because when the heart is good and happy and, and all of that, you know, you just friends with everybody. you happy about everything, and you're oblivious to everything else that's going around. But here God is. Here he is. And he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but our God shall deliver them out of them all. <laughs> I was like, God, I'm getting a revelation that the first person, the first part of God that we meet is God the deliverer. When we know him, as a deliverer, he keeps coming to our rescue because a perfect trust is developed for him because you need him to deliver you. All you find out, man can't deliver you, your sister can't deliver you, your spouse, it, it, can't nobody deliver you like God can deliver you. Amen. And yet all the time, the promise is coming nearer and nearer to you. Why? Because you're developing an acute hearing for God. It's nothing like hearing God when you're in trouble. I wish I had some help. Amen. And, and, you know, and we often say to ourselves, man, I go from one thing to another thing. But look how better you hear God now than. <laughs> Amen. Look how much more you in your word. Look how much more you come to church. Look how much more you trust God. Amen. Look how much more you depend upon him. Oh, my God. Amen. Why? Because the one thing that God would have us to recognize as we're going on in our strength is how, much, how vulnerable we really are. But it's a good thing. Say it's a good thing. Amen. Amen. So what are the purpose for afflictions? Number one is to strengthen you. To make you stronger than you ever been. Amen. And number two, to cause us to reassess our purpose. Amen. Because my purpose gets conflicted when I bring other people into it. And I want to act on the betterment of their behalf and not my behalf. I want to deal with their weakness and overlook my weakness. Is anybody with me right here? Amen. And then 
last but not least, is to cause us to draw closer to God in our nakedness. Praise the Lord. So it's a cause to pursue purpose. And the greatest price is that of separation. Because God is calling you unto himself. And he's not sharing you with no one. This is what I know about God. Amen. Now, I, I, he'll let you have a husband, have a wife. That's what Paul said. Amen. But after that, he ain't sharing you. He ain't sharing you with your car. He ain't sharing you with your house. He ain't sharing you with your daddy or your mama. Amen. When you marry a woman, he say, leaving your mother and your father and cleaving to her. Now, I want you to cleave to her, but you got to leave them. Why? Because he is the parent. This is so good right here. Amen. And so I was looking at that, and I said, you know, God, we got to hear you better this year. We got to believe you more. We got to trust you more. And we got to stop outside influences, come on, from interrupting our progress. Is, is that... Woo we amen. Because now you can't have a tantrum. Because God gonna look like this. Really? Really? I thought we did this already. Really? You still crying over him? Really? I thought we was over this. Really? Okay, the clock is kept ticking for your future. While you tantrum, having your tantrum, the clock is ticking for your future. While you lava gagging, the clock is ticking for your future. It ain't about nobody else, it's about you. The clock is ticking. You can't worry about who helped you, who didn't help you, how they didn't help you, how they rolled over you, how they backed the car up and sent the car back and turned the car around and came back and got you again. Come on, I can't worry about who tried to kill me. I'm telling you, he kept me alive even though your car came over me four or five times. Oh, y'all won't help me. Even though you ran over my emotions over and over again, your God kept me alive. Y'all won't help me. For my purpose. Amen. The prophet said you got to let God be famous. How he going to be famous through you? How he going to be famous and you not doing anything? How can he be famous? Come on, and you won't get off your duff. You got all that mentality, and you're not doing anything with it. You're holding up a, an idea. Come on, that God has given you, and you can't get it. Come on, because the fullness of it is in your obedience. he called you to be it's got purpose amen he called you because he wants you to be an example amen we have seen talents be wasted amen and overcome what I was looking at the uh, one of the little documentaries they did of Whitney Houston, it, it's just a travesty. It's a travesty when you get caught up in other people. 
and lose sight of your purpose. It's a travesty when you lose yourself. You can't lose who you are. You got to know who you are. Because the gifts and talents, that's so good right there, are without repentance. God not sorry he gave you a man. He's not sorry he made you a genius. He isn't sorry he made you smarter than other people. But what you going to do with it? Are you going to settle for less? Or are you going to pursue purpose? We can settle back in slavery. Amen. Or I can say I have a right to ed be educated. Amen. I have a right to pursue higher learning. Amen. I have a right to go after what God has given me. Come on. Amen. Or I'm just waiting. I'm waiting on funding. I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting on, come on, that ain't going to never happen. If you start with one class at a time. Hallelujah. It is no reason to remain mediocre in these days. It is no reason not to be property owners. It's no reason not for you to have a business. It's no reason not to be able to live where you want, buy what you want, eat what you want. But when we keep getting to get delivered and we keep entertaining the spirit of inferiority, which means I made everybody superior over myself. I was reading a, a book. I can't think of what his name is. And he said the greatest two spirits unleashed in the people of God is the spirit of inferiority and insecurity. Because, you know, nobody gives you security. You have to be secure in who God made you to be. Nobody is, can make you feel inferior unless you allow them to be a Lord over you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about having the promise of God. I'm talking about the fulfillment of what God wants to do in my life, in your life. Come on, it's so great. Tell your neighbor, say, what God has for you is so great. Amen. We ain't got time. We don't have time. For you to come on, have you been here 20 years and you still coming to the altar for the same demon? I'm not saying you can't still come, but you need to check it. You need to lay hands. I cast you out myself. You coming out of here myself. Childhood demons, teenage demons, daddy, mama demons, all them demons got to go. Why? Because what God has for me, he can't give it to a little child. Paul said, when I was a child, come on, I played like y'all. Amen. But when he said, when I got grown, come on, amen, I put away childish things. How am I going to get, I'm telling you, God wants to overwhelm you with blessings. They are a part of our heritage. See, Abraham went through for me. Then Jesus came and laid the blood on it. Y'all, come on, and inducted me into the kingdom. Come on, with all Bill of Rights. 
Amen. You got to think I got rights as a child of God, as an heir of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. But in particularly, amen, Abraham, the Bible said, in you, many nations. He didn't tell me I had to be a Jew to get blessed. He, y'all, I'm a nation. Oh, y'all, come on. Black people are a nation. Come on, and we have a due heritage. I wish I had some. Come on, you trying to get the slave heritage, but I'm telling you, you got a due heritage. Hey, man, I have a due heritage. Heritage is do me. Amen. And we should not have to go to heaven to see the reality of God. We ought to live our lives healthy. Amen. Uh, what he say, uh, uh, brother, above all things. He, he said, I want you to what? And what? Even as your, amen. When I get out of my skin and in the spirit, it's going to cause me to have prosperity come to me. Prosperity is spiritual. And health is spiritual. Why? Because if I'm in the image of God, God ain't sick. If I'm in the image of God, God ain't poor. Amen. Jesus became poor so we wouldn't have to be poor. But our level of hearing, our level of understanding has to rise. We can't just come through a conference, yell and scream, agree with the prophets, and not see it come to pass. We got to say, Lord, all that coming in my life, all that, all that's good. Grab a hold of what God has for you. Amen. Let him sharpen your talent. We have a lot of talent in our church. Actresses and actors, and we just got a lot of everything. Amen. Designers and um, come on, amen. It's just so much in you, and I can see it in you. But many times we just settle. And set it aside. Amen. But the blessings of the Lord make us rich. And they had no sorrow. Enough crying. It's time to get glad. <laughs> it's time to get glad. Amen. God is so wonderful. Amen. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. And I, I was saying, I said, God, are the people coming? He said, these people love me. What you talking about? Ain't no snow keeping them from me. <laughs> I say, I call a pastor. I call, I call one of my friends. What y'all thinking? He say, baby, I gotta go to church. God is good. This ain't Tuesday. This Sunday. This the Lord's day. This the Lord's day. God is good. He's faithful. I want to thank you for you moving out and coming out. Amen. Come on, we're going to get the communion ready. Amen. And while they're doing that, let the rest of us get our tithes ready. Because, I, 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 you know, everything canceled. We 